Stonehenge is a rock monument made up of 150 stones placed in circular shape. It is located in southern England. Archaeologists claim that it was built around 2000 BC. Though numerous studies have been carefully brought out, no one really knows what Stonehenge is, what it was used for, and how it got there. Scholars have suggested that it could have been a temple, a ceremonial monument, or because of its precise alignment, it could have been a clock. All research can be sure about is that Stonehenge existed for a reason. Stonehenge is important to the study of world history because it gives archaeologists an idea of how the people of that time were like. As a whole, Stonehenge is important to, the, to world history because it brings us closer to history and it shows exactly how intelligent people of that era were. Stonehenge is a highly significant was highly significant to 2000 BC because at the time technology was not very advanced and multiple persons were not able to pick up four, four tons solely by manpower. Archaeologists still ponder how Stonehenge came to be. This historical site relates to interactions of humans in the environment as well as the development of culture through technology. Although there is no evidence of technology used to set up these stones, by common sense we know there is no way even a lot of people can pick up four tons and travel miles without certain help of technologies. Hieroglyphs are a form of writing using pictures or symbols to represent a word or idea. It was created in ancient Egypt at the time of 3500 BC. Hieroglyphs were used for sending messages to people, writing down laws, recording the census, and also to record the king's belongings. Hieroglyphs are important to the study of world history because this was the birth to writing as we know it. Hieroglyphs help scholars and archaeologists accurately document the history that had been made. The impact of hieroglyphics on the world made it possible for people to come up with a universal language to communicate and write down important things. Considering the time period, 3500 BC, with a rising number of educated people, as well as the improvements in technology, hieroglyphics were a highly significant invention. This, this was the time right before Hinduism, Judaism, and Islam became known and started to spread. Hieroglyphs made it possible for religious scholars to start documenting their religion. It relates to interactions of humans, because of the intelligence in which it took to create a concrete system of writing. The Colosseum is a Roman amphitheater that was built in 70 CE. It was built as a means of entertainment for the Roman people through gladiatorial combat and wild animal fighting. The Colosseum is important to the study of world history because it stood as a symbol on Rome for power and it played a big role in culture and politics of Rome. The Colosseum is truly important to world history because it commanded typically by the place where Christians were persecuted because they were not of the Roman Catholic religion. Without the Colosseum, history would have taken a different route, changing who we are today. The Colosseum is significant to its time period because it was built through, with beautiful architectural columns derived from Greece and is also known to Rome. The Colosseum relates to cultural and political world history things because it was one of the main parts of Roman culture and it was used for political and social matters. The Terracotta Army of the Terracotta Warriors is a collection of sculptures made for the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huangdi. The warriors were sculpted from clay because Qin Shi Huangdi wanted his imperial status and military power to continue on into his afterlife. The Terracotta Warriors are significant to the study of world history because they represent the great lengths to which the Chinese favor their religion and their first emperor. The Terracotta Army is important to its time period because it reveals so much about the people of ancient China. It reveals not only the craftsmanship of sculptures, but it shows very well developed metallurgical techniques of China during the time, during the time through swords, daggers, spears, and axes. The Terracotta Army relates to culture and technologies used in the process of making the soldiers and religion to the beliefs in afterlife.
The genie Hito is an extremely elegant and highly complex kimono that was only worn by court ladies in Japan. Literally translated, it means 12 layer robe. The Junihito started to appear around the 10th century during the Heian era. The various layers are silk garnet. The innermost garment is made out of white silk, followed by the other layers, which have various names, which are finally closed off by a vinyl layer or coat. The total weight could add up to 20 kilograms or 44 pounds. The colors and the arrangement of the layers are very important. The colors have poetic names, such as Crimson Plum of the Spring. The only place where the layers are discerned are around the sleeves and the neck. Apart from their robes, Japanese court ladies also wore their hair very long and only cut at the sides of their face in a layered fashion. The longer hair was sometimes worn tied back. An important accessory was an elaborate fan which could be tied together by a rope when folded. This was used by the lady not only to cool herself, since it could get very hot, but it was also an important communication device. Since a lady was not allowed to speak face to face to a male outsider, she could hold her sleeve up or use the open fan to shield herself from inquiring looks. Communication to a suitor had to follow with her normally hiding behind a sudre, screens or blinds in any case. The Junihito set the basics for any future designs in Japanese history. It gave inspiration to many of the future clothing styles seen today. Only important court women got to wear this expensive clothing. The arrangement of the layers and their colors were a good indication to any outsider what taste and what rank the lady had. It signified wealth, femininity, honor, and high social standing. Social and economic class determined what the woman wore. Only women of high birth were privileged to wear this type of attire. And even those these women got to wear such extravagant robes, speaking to male outsiders was face to face was forbidden. The only part a male could see was parts of her sleeves peeking out from underneath the blinds. The Heian Palace was the original imperial palace of Heian Kyo, present day Kyoto, the capital of Japan from 794 CE to 1227 CE. In Japan, this palace is called Dai Dai Ri. The palace served as the imperial residence and the administrative center of Japan for most of the Heian period from 794 CE to 1185 CE. It was designed to be a suitable place for the emperor to live and to conduct great ceremonies and such. The original role of the palace was to manifest centralized government role model adopted by Japan from China in the 7th century. The Dai Khan and its subsidiary eight ministries. The palace was designed to provide an appropriate setting for the emperor's residence, the, to conduct gr great affairs of the state and the accompanying ceremonies. While the residential function of the palace continued until the 12th century, the facilities built for the grand state ceremonies began to fall into disuse by the 9th century. This was due to both the abandonment of several statutory ceremonies and the procedures and the transfer of several remaining ceremonies into a smaller scale setting of the inner palace. The palace set a foundation for many future Japanese buildings. Even though it was made based off a Chinese model, the structure is unique to Jap Japanese culture. The palace was a place where important political and spiritual events took place. It was a sacred place that was respected and admired by all. The palace displays Japanese cultural, architectural designs and art. The Jai Hair Ceremony, which is when a hairpin is bestowed upon a young woman when she reaches the age of 15, is a rite of passage signifying that she had reached a marriageable age. Long and shiny hair has always been a sign of beauty and health. So up until the age 15, a girl has always wore her hair in braids. During the hairpin ceremony, her hair is washed, combed into a knot, kept together with a hairpin. Women wore hairpins made out of gold, jade, or wood, depending on their social status. The ritual signified the coming of maturity, legal empowerment, and the burdening of social responsibility. Gender roles and family relationships, family and kinship are involved because the girls are welcomed into their adulthood with family and friends. A phoenix crown is a Chinese traditional headgear for women. 
It was worn by noble women in the Ming Dynasty on ceremonies or official occasions. It is also traditional headgear for brides. The crown represents Chinese culture using its greatest icons, the phoenix and the dragon. Many Chinese women today choose to wear the phoenix crowns at their weddings as it connects them to their ancestors through ancient traditions. The phoenix and the dragon paired on the phoenix crown represent love and a happy marriage. The dragon alone represents a yang, male strength, and the sun's want. The phoenix alone represents yin, the female spirit. Only women of high stature were allowed to wear such sacred and expensive crowns at their weddings. Bride's rank and social status contributed to which crown she could wear with the number of phoenixes and dragons she could have on her crown. The first steamboat was built in 1796, during the Industrial Revolution. A steamboat is a boat in which its main method of propelling forward is through steam power. Its primary use was to transport surplus amounts of goods to different parts of the world, and it was also used as a transportation method for people. The steamboat is significant to the study of world history because it made transportation faster and was a lot help during the Industrial Revolution. The steamboat is significant to its time period because it made trading and the industrialization of countries faster. It was the leading cause of the fast spread of the Industrial Revolution. The steamboat relates to economic expansion and the development of social transformation. The steamboat opened up trade to a new limit, greater benefiting the economy of every country involved in the trade, and it also opened up the door for mixed cultures even more as people traveled on it. The steamboat also caused interactions with nature with major air and water pollution. The Statue of Liberty is a token of appreciation for the friendship between America and France started during the American Revolution. The Statue of Liberty is a robed woman with a broken chain around her ankle and a, and a torch in her right hand and a tablet held in her left with the date July 4, 1776. The statue is located on Liberty Island by the New York Harbor as a welcoming symbol to immigrants arriving. Due to political issues in France, construction of the statue did not start until 1875, and the gift wasn't presented to America until 1886. The Statue of Liberty is significant in world history because it's not only does it symbolize freedom, democracy, and abolition, but also the international friendship between U.S. and France. The Statue of Liberty is significant to its time period because it marks the strong friendship of France and America. The Statue of Liberty highlights the mutual desire for liberty in both countries, America and France. The artifact relates to political through state building and political structures. The Statue of Liberty is not just a monument of freedom, but is a symbol of liberty and democracy for all who come to these countries. Chernobyl is a nuclear power plant commissioned in 1977 and decommissioned in 2000. Located in the city Pyramet, the capital of Ukraine, the city of Pyramet was like any other city that housed 50,000 people. In April of 1986, an explosion erupted in the fourth reactor of the power plant, causing the world's worst nuclear power crisis. The whole town was evacuated within 36 hours, leaving everything behind. People who were close to the power plant at the time died of over-radiation or died later on by cancer. The Chernobyl power plant is significant to the study of world history because it is the biggest radiation emission. Also shows just how advanced and dangerous to humankind is becoming and is a warning to humanity to be careful with what we are messing with. The Chernobyl power plant is significant to its time period because since the accident, governments have issued new safety regulations and tested for power plants. The Chernobyl power plant relates to its interactions of humanity and the environment through disease caused by radiation that still affect the land and people today. The term democracy first appeared in ancient Greek political and philosophical thought in the city-state of Athens. Democracy is a form of government in which all eligible citizens have an equal say in the decisions that affect their lives. Democracy allows them to participate equally either directly or through elected representatives in the proportional development and creation of laws. 
it encompasses social, economic, and cultural conditions that enable the free and equal practice of political self-determination. Democracy is important to the world history because it is one of the main sets for most revolutions throughout history. During this time, 1939 to 1945, World War II was at its heat. The speech by the comedian Charlie Chaplin in the movie The Dictator highlights the need for democracy and why the world needs it, and is targeted mainly towards Germany under Nazi power. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, Tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel? Who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder? Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power, the power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power, let us all unite, let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all...